Hello, it's Dr. Triple Seven, and today I'm doing an awesome video. Um, I saw this video when I was browsing through the internet, and somebody had a problem with their computer, and they're asking, me, "What should I do when I first get one?" So I thought I'd do a video on what you should do when you first get a computer. Now, this is basically mostly can pertain to people who just bought a computer from a local shop, like Best Buy, Future Shop, anyone like that. Um, people who build their computers, odds are not going to have all these issues and or know how to do it, fix them. And people who have had a computer for a couple of years can follow some of these steps, but most of them are probably naturally done or it's kind of too late. So in this video, I'll be covering things like making sure you you got what you paid for, um, updating Windows, updating drivers, the nuclear option, updating your BIOS, and having a backup plan and some security stuff. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to uh, start off you guys is uh, making sure you got what you paid for. Now, if you want to skip ahead to something uh, else, you can go to the timestamps below in the description below and click them and go somewhere else in the video. So now to make sure we got what we paid for, we're going to using a program called Bellark Advisor. Now, if you built your own computer, you know what you, you know what you got in there. But if you don't, if you didn't build your own computer, then odds are you really don't know what's in there. Now, some people are going to ask me, well, how am I supposed to know what I have in there? You know, I don't know anything about computers. This program is going to tell you exactly what you have in your system. Now, what I want you to do is grab a paper from your computer box, and it should tell you, you know, what's in the box, basically, well, what the stuff is inside your computer. You want to compare this to what your program says. If they're the same, you're good. Numbers do mean a thing. I have a lot of people say, you know, um, I had an in Intel 2600K, but I bought, you know, a 30 something. Numbers do matter. Um, even a couple, even a thousand off is like the world. Okay, I have a 3930K in here. If I was to up, if I was to buy the 3960X, that's a big difference. So you want to make sure that even the numbers are the same. Anyways, so this program is called Bellark Advisor. It's a simple download. I'll have a link below. Uh, just go open it up and click I agree. Click install. So it's going to say preparing to analyze. It's going to say would you like to check for security definitions? Click yes. It will go ahead and create a profile of your computer. And now you want to grab the paper and compare it. Now this computer that I'm actually on right now is my own, which is a custom built one. So I actually literally know everything that's inside of it. So me personally, I could skip this step. But for most people, this is a great way to make sure you actually got what you paid for. So this is everything from RAM to um, you know everything. You want to make sure exactly what you got what you paid for. Once it's done analyzing your computer, it completely closes. Now to analyze to figure out what it analyzed, go ahead and open up your file browser. Go to your computer here and find your hard drive. So it's probably just the C drive. Open that one up. Now you're you're gonna want to go to either programs files 86 or just program files. If you have the 86, then go to 86. From here, go to the B section and it should say Bellark. Open that up. Open up Advisor. And then right here, you'll have the name of your computer .bci. Open it up. Your browser should open it up. And here it is. So it tells you some information here. And then below, um, we have our operating system. We have our processor. So it tells you what processor I have. Um, everything with the memory catch. Um, 64 already. How many cores it has. How many hyper threads it has. And any drives that I have. So this is anything from um, hard drives to actual optical drive. Over here, we have system model. Um, I don't have a system model. Again, it's custom computer. Motherboard. We have the company and the model. And I have a bunch of other stuff below, like display, multimedia, bus adapters, wind virus protection. Basically, everything you need to know about your computer is here. Everything from printers to memory module, everything. So the main things you want to compare are your processor. Make sure, like right here, where it says Intel i7-330K. Whatever yours says, make sure it matches the paper. 
Same with the board here. Um, you want to go to RAM right here. Now this is megabytes, so just take if you don't know what it is already, then copy it. Type in here, paste it in, and then go MB to GB. So I have about 31.9 gigabytes, so that means I have 30 gigs of RAM. So there you go. That's how you transfer that. So just go through here and make sure everything is correct. Another thing you want to uh, double check on is your hard drives. If all those things are correct, then you're pretty good. Now let's know your system is um, proper with the proper specifications. Now I'm going to show you guys one method of erasing literally everything. This is I call it the nuclear option. The nuclear option is literally nuking your data on your hard drive. That means erasing everything and leaving nothing behind. So this method is very useful. It erases everything, but it also erases your whole operating system. So unless you actually know what you're doing, I highly suggest don't doing this, not using this method. Um, if you decide to do it, you make sure you have a separate CD that you can install Windows back onto it, and make sure this CD is not from the um, company that you bought the computer from, because if you did do that, odds are it's actually going to have the bloatware that we're trying to get rid of already on the CD. So you're going to have to just continue on doing the rest of the tutorial anyway. So unless you actually have a separate CD, I would highly suggest not doing this method. Um, but if you want to, I'll have a link below. And make sure you put this um, ISO on a USB or a CD and then boot it up from there and you can nuke it. The next step you will want to do and it's a pretty crucial to a out of the box system because it is, has been on the shelf for a while. It probably is out of date um, with Windows um, update. So to update to Windows update, it's pretty simple. Um, so open up your start orb or go to the start menu. I'm using Windows 8, but you're just going to start menu there. So just type in Windows, Windows update and open it up. It'll bring it up. You can go to the corner here and click check for updates. It will give you, it will find the latest updates for your system and then give you down install the updates um, you can go to the option, optional ones and I'll install these two because I want to personally but then it will go ahead and download them and install the updates you can also go to things like change settings where you can let me choose you can have it if you're lazy you can have it automatically install um, automatically you can have um, a recommended updates, Microsoft update, anything like that. You will have to be administrator to change these options. Once it is done, it may ask you to restart your computer, um, restart it, and you're good. The next thing you want to do is update your drivers. A lot of times, you'll have options like Bluetooth and other cool features that you actually cannot use until you install some drivers. For example, on my computer, my motherboard allows me to use Bluetooth. I can actually cannot use this Bluetooth until I install a driver. There are many different ways of finding your drivers. Um, on some machines like HP, etc., they will, using their recovery media, media or whatever application it comes with, you can use their own application to scan your computer and give you some drivers. One awesome utility that works on all computers is Slim Drivers Free. This is a free application that basically finds every single driver that your computer needs and lets you download them. So if you go to the link below for Slim Drivers, you can go ahead and download the application. It's a pretty small download, so you can get, then go ahead and open it up. It's a Microsoft certified partner. You can go, I agree. It will go ahead and download the application. Then you can go ahead and, and launch it. Once you launch it, it will bring up the their website and show you some other products that you can try. But now you can go ahead and click Start Scan. So once you click Start Scan, it will go through and scan all of your computer parts and find any drivers that you need. So now it's going to tell me I have 70 um, out-of-date drivers. Me personally, I rarely actually ever install drivers, and for that reason, I thought I'd show you guys. 
Um, I, I did do them when I first got the computer, but I haven't in a bit, so this is too expected. So and depending on what system you have, you may have more than others. I have a higher end processor, so I tend to have more um, things asking me to download. So to actually download them though, um, for example for my graphics card here, I click the download update button. You can click a system restore. I just say yes, just in case um, you can do that. And then once it's done creating the system restore, uh, you can go ahead and try it. So now it's going to go ahead and say downloading the video GeForce GTX 670 um, update. While it's doing that, yeah, you can uh, look at their other products that will pop up as advertisement. Alright, so it's just finishing. Once it finishes, it will automatically start the start it. So over here, it's going to extract. So this can take a bit of time, um, but trust me, guys, it is worth it. You actually may get some new features that you actually never knew about. Um, speed gains and stuff like that for USB ones are expected too. And here we go. So I'm installing my NVIDIA graphics card. I just go through with, with it, and then I can go ahead and install the next driver and go through down the list. The next thing I'm showing you guys is updating the BIOS. Now, you don't have to do this. I would tell most people not to do it unless you have experience with going through. If you want to learn how to do it and do it, it's actually a good idea because um, updating your BIOS has been known to fix many problems like USB issues, Bluetooth issues, um, fan fan noisiness issues. So, especially on the new motherboards nowadays, it's pretty simple to do. All you have to do is put a file on USB, plug it in, and follow the steps. Um, I suggest doing this if you know what you're doing. If you have any questions on yours, I um, let me know. Now, to actually do it though for your system, you'll want to find whatever motherboard you have. Go on Google, go on the company's website or whatever company owns that motherboard, and follow their tutorial to do it and download their appropriate file for it. Once it's actually done, it um, it's pretty simple to do. All it's going to ask you to do is reset the computer, and then you're good. Alright, so the next thing I like to do is using an application called PC Decrapifier, we can decrapify our PC. So you can go ahead and download it below. It's a pretty small download, and we can go ahead and open it up. It's an absolutely great application. Once you open it up, you can go ahead and click check for updates to make sure you have the most recent version. After that, go ahead and click next. You can read the agreement and click next. And then read the warning. It's going to ask you if you're running a new ver brand new computer out of the box. Um, if you're following this tutorial, when you actually get one, you want to click yes and then follow on. Me personally, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to click no. So it's going to ask me to create a restore point. The reason it's doing this is because just in case you uninstall an application that you actually needed. Me personally, I'm not going to be uninstalling a lot of stuff. I know I need to keep, so I'm not going to. So what it's going to do is going to come up right away and give you some uh, some apps that it thinks you should uninstall. So right now, it's telling me the Ash Toolbar and the Sun Java Update Schedule. Um, the Ash Toolbar is something I just installed to test this application. As you guys can tell, it actually says this is crap. Let's get rid of it. So you can, you can do is click none and then go click ones that you want or if you want them all gone, click all and then click next. You can say um, you cancel to, to stop it or you can click OK and it will start. And what, the great thing is, is it does it all for you. Boom. I didn't have to click any buttons. All my crap is removed. This PC just decrapified everything. Next thing it does is it gives you any app. app normal applications. So this is everything that's available in your uninstall menu. So I will go through and just pick one for example. So there's eight gadget pack I don't want really to use anymore so I will pick that one. And I will also get rid of CD Burner XP. Then click next. Okay. It will go ahead and uninstall these in silent mode and will completely get rid of them in an instant. Depending on how, fa how big the applications are, depends on how long they um, take to uninstall. 
Okay. So once it's all done, you are done. Um, you can go ahead and click um, submit some feedback if you would like to. Otherwise, you are done with this application. Anyways, guys, that's about it for this part of the video. Um, again, as PC Decrapifier, it literally decrapifies your PC. It's a great application to have on a flash drive and at all times. Now that we just uninstall a bunch of stuff, now it's time to do the opposite. Reinstall or install our favorite apps. Now we can go ahead and download every single app that we need one by one, but that's probably going to take a while. This is a very cool application. Um, it's a website actually called Ninnites, I believe it said. Um, it's very cool. allows you to go through and pick everything that you like and install it in one step. It's a fully automatic installer. I've done a review on it a long time ago, but odds are if you're been subscribed to me for under a year, you've never seen this before. So it's a very cool application. Go to ninnite.com and you can scroll down from the many different apps they have and click on the ones that you want and install them. So we have web browsers, we have the th probably the three most popular ones, um, Firefox, Chrome, and Opera. And then we have almost everything you can think of. So me personally, I have a lot of this stuff already installed, so I'm not gonna go ahead and install everything over again. But I will install some stuff to show you guys exactly what you're going with here. So I will install the the Klight Codex, and the process is the same for all of it. It does it automatically. So just the more you have, the bit longer it takes. You even have the option to do some security here, um, some online storage, the other, which is like Steam, so you can plop Steam in there if you like. Utilities. So I will have Team Viewer install. And we have things like WinRAR, PZIP. And anyway, once you've gotten the ones that you want, I'm only doing two, but the more you do, the more beneficial this program really is. And anyway, once you have the two that you want, click Get Installer. It will automatically pop up the installer for you. Open up the application. And then, boom, it will automatically show, automatically start downloading your apps. If you click the Hide the Details button here, it will automatically show you what it's doing. So right now, it just finished downloading um, TeamViewer. It's installing TeamViewer now. Once it's done installing TeamViewer, it will go right ahead and boom, open. Now it's going to start downloading the Keylight Codex. And the great thing with this application is, depending on your system, so if you have a 64 bit operating system or a 32 bit operating system, it will accommodate to whatever yours, yours is. So I have a 64-bit operating system, so as you can tell, it is downloading a 64-bit version of the codex. So this is basically the application. Um, you guys can see um, downloading both those co both codex and Team Viewer um, would take probably 10 minutes, a little less than maybe five, 10 minutes. This is doing it in a couple minutes. Once you get to more applications, like if you just install this your computer, you're going to want Google Chrome, you're going to want a security. Um, software, you don't want a bunch of stuff. So this is a great application that allows you to install a bunch of stuff really fast. Once it's done, go ahead and click close. And now it's just deleting the um, thing that you downloaded. So just delete that right there. And you are good. The next part of this video is devoted to security. Obviously, um, you know, you get viruses on the Windows computer. To be honest, I've actually never actually had a virus kill a computer of mine. Um, maybe it's just good luck, or to be honest, I actually never seen it happen. But people are paranoid about it. All right, I don't blame them. So to be honest, um, I use Microsoft Security Essentials. A lot of people trash it. Um, me personally, I've had zero problems with it. It deletes my viruses, and I'm never had a problem. So I'm not complaining about it. So you can go out and buy Norton or EVG or anything like that. Um, if you're going to go for the free one, you can try Microsoft Security Essentials. It works perfect with Windows 8. It's made by Microsoft, so it's you know made to work. You can also try AVG free if you'd like to try that one too. Now, I'm not going to talk about um, antiviruses that much. I'll be talking about extras. So the first one I want to talk about is this browser, Checker. 
it's called Coralie's Browser Check. I don't know if it's like that, but anyway, the point is, it's a plugin that you use, and it's going to tell me my my browser if it's actually up to date and security. So all you got to do is click the install button. Mine's are already gray because I already installed it, but you just click yours right in there. It will install, and then it comes up right here. Just click on it. It opens a new tab, and it tells me what's up with my system. Now that you know the ones that are basically not safe, what you can do is either fix it by um, updating to the latest one, or you can actually disable them. Uh, if it gives you the option to click fix it, it will bring you to the website so you can download the latest update. Or if you click on one that's called an ins in insecure version, it will tell you why. And you can actually go find more information. It will tell you about the virus or whatever's up with that version. Now to actually get rid of a non-safe one, open a new tab and type in about space and then um, go plugin or sorry, colon plugin plugin sorry and I'll bring up the plugins tab here and you can go ahead and disable or enable what you need to disable or enable so it told me that I should disable the VLC one so I'll go ahead here and go to VLC and click disable and go and find the Java runtime so Java right here and disable that one and then we can go click rescan and boom the only one left is our Apple QuickTime one which I don't really feel like going down this but that's how you uh, make sure your browser is up to date and secure a lot of attacks now are coming into the browsers Keeping your browser safe is going to keep you out of a lot of hassle. Another great tool I like to use for keeping my, my PC safe is Malwarebytes A Malware. This is a free application. It's not a real antivirus. And what I mean like that is it does not actually like protect your system 24-7. It only scans your computer when you ask it to scan. Like what I mean is it's it does not it's not like AVG where, or Microsoft Security Essentials where it's always open like right here I have it I have it over here um, it's not like that this is a type of tool that you open up like by yourself every once in a while and you write yourself so when you open it up it's a very cool one um, you want to update it like, right away so if it asks you to update click yes if it doesn't then go to update and click check for updates and it will tell you that you either have the latest version or to go ahead and update it. If you go to the protection tab, um, you can obviously start the trial, which is the full version. But um, for the free version, it's great because you can do a quick scan and a full scan. So a quick scan and a full scan are the same thing. Only difference is the quick one is just like a shorter area. So I'll show you that. If you uh, click it and then click start the scan, it will go through and scan. This is a great way. I like to scan my computer once a week. Um, usually I have a scheduled scan go off. And I like to scan up this program once a week. Um, you don't want to do it every day because, you know, usually it's a little paranoid right there. But if you do it like once a week, it's a great um, time span. Um, so you can, I'll go ahead and click abort. But once you actually do a full scan, um, it, it provides you with this great um, log here. tells you everything that you need to know and anything that's found. For example, in the quarantine area here, once you get rid of something, it goes to quarantine. Now, this is a virus that it must have found or something like that. Um, anything from adware also. A lot of antiviruses do not remove adware. Adware actually makes pop-ups come up on your computer. This program removes adware. So when you combine this um, program with a standard free um, tool like AVG Free or Microsoft Security Essentials, you really have a powerhouse um, security. So, and once it's in your quarantine, you can leave it there, or you can click the delete button, and it actually goes away permanently. It's gone. So, you can go to the logs, ignore list, settings. Um, the ignore list is useful because I have some, obviously, I have some stuff that's obviously viruses. And I know that personally, and I know they're not going to do anything. So what I do is I purposely put them in the ignore list. That way they don't get, they don't come up. So things like can enable. Um, a hacking folder that I have. I put these ones there because I know they're I know they're viruses or I know they come as viruses, and I don't need me 
to be alerted all the time. In the settings tab, we have things like um, warmth, database, outdated. I suggest one on one day because you want yours updated all the time. You want it to be up to date like 100% of the time. So the rest of the settings is pretty good though. Um, you can also go to schedule that's only available for licensed users. Um, if you go to more tools, you have things like this, which is just other stuff that they have. You can click the button and it'll tell you like what it is. It brings us to their website. So they have some cool stuff there if you want to read that, read about it. If you go to the about tab though, it um, tells you what it is. Anyways, guys, that's what that's about for this part of the video. Um, like I said though, this is not a antivirus. I'm trying to stress this. If you have any questions, let ask me. This is not actually a full-time antivirus. It's a one-time thing. Now that our PC is practically set up. I have a one last suggestion for anyone who's a bit paranoid about losing their data. If you go to a place like Walmart or Best Buy, you can simply buy a external hard drive for probably about $500, or sorry, not $500, a 500 gigabyte hard drive for probably about 50 bucks. Um, you can even, if you want, buy a SSD or a actual internal hard drive and have it plugged in for this feature. In Windows 8, if you go to the control panel and go to uh, the file history area, you have this ability called of file history. File history is a new feature in Windows 8 which basically allows you to bring back to life old copies of your de um, desktop, documents, pictures, videos, and that contacts and favorites and bring them like back to life. So if you go to system and security and then go to file history you have that option to click the turn on button. But before you turn it on, go to the advanced settings. You can go save copies of files every hour, um, every 30 minutes, whatever it is. Now, depending on what ver um, what you use, so if you use an external hard drive, it will take much, much, much longer. And depending on, how, on your computer, it can depend on how long it takes to back up. Now, me personally, it's it will be doing it to my two terabyte hard drive, which is actually in my computer, it's a internal 2 terabyte hard drive, so the copy time to it will be much faster than an external one. USB is slower than SATA cords. So if you actually want to select one though, you can go to select drive and it will come up. If you actually want to do it to a different computer drive and you know how to do that, you can go to add network location. It will uh, find a person's computer, so a mom's computer for example. And I can like, you know, back my stuff up to her computer over the internet wirelessly. So you can exclude some folders. Let's say your your music folder is just useless. Like music, boom. Now you don't have to worry. It will not back up your music folder. So file history is a great tool in Windows 8 only. Um, of course, you can actually restore these also. So you can click that right there. So all you got to do is click turn on. It will start, and right now it is saving copies of it for the first time. So it's a pretty cool feature, guys. I suggest checking it out. While we're on the topic of um, backing up and stuff like that, I also check out the recovery tab, which has some system restore options here, and being able to open system restore. Um, system restore is a great um, application. Let's go back in time when something wrong goes something goes wrong. Um, you also have you can go to configure and choose you know how much it's on for and what drives it's actually running on. That's what it for this video guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. It took me a while to put this together and but I hope you guys did enjoy. Bookmark this tab just in case you ever get a new computer. You can come back to this video. Um, even when this video gets out of date, the tools and stuff like this will will be still useful even with new computers to come. Anyways guys if you have any questions, comments or concerns leave them below, um, like the video, and if you have any questions, comments, or, I already said that, um, anyways guys, subscribe, and see you in my next video, this is the Hacker 007, and I'm signing off.